All right, Larry Kruger here at Levi Stadium on a Thursday with a little recap of everything that went down in Ninerland as they prepare for the Green Bay Packers Saturday night, 5-15. The winner moves on to the NFC Championship game. The loser season comes to an end. Now, we're here at Levi's brought to you by Pig and a Pickle, the best barbecue in all of Northern California. Check them out in Emeryville and Corte Madera. They're open seven days a week from 11 a.m. till 8 p.m., Get the brisket, get the brisket chili. Go say hi to Damon and Mary. Tell them that Larry Kruger sent you. And this video is also brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Check the link in the description. Use the promo code KRUG, K-R-U-E-G, and they will match you up to your first $100. All right, Kyle Shanahan spoke to us today. Really interesting um, discussion, a lot of different topics. Cleveland Farrell is out. Um, we didn't expect him to play. He's not going to play. He's got the knee injury. He's definitely out in this game. Dre Greenlaw's listed as questionable um, with the Achilles. And I know, you know, Dre had a shot, um, and I know he's going to go. So he's going to be playing. He's listed as, as questionable, but he's going in this game. You can bank on that. Um, Saturday night when they, uh, when they play the anthem and the Niners run out there, Dre Greenlaw is going to be there. Uh, playing against the Green Bay Packers, you can bank on that. Another guy who is likely to be activated, but it won't be until tomorrow, is George Odom, who's got a bicep injury, and um, he's basically already gone on social media and said he expects to play Saturday. So the Niners get back one of the best special teams players in the entire league in George Odom. Kyle was asked about the rest factor today, and he said, you know, I don't know about the rest factor. Our team's ready to go. I'm excited to see how we play. Um, he really didn't know, you know, if if rest is going to be a factor or not. He was also asked about the field conditions because there's a possibility that there will be some rain. And he said he's not worried, not worried about the field. Now, I talked to Colton McKivitz earlier in the week about the field, and he says the field here at Levi's drains really well, that the grounds crew's top notch, and he expects the field, regardless of the rain, to be in pretty good shape. So that's a good, good, uh, good note there from Colton. Um, I asked Kyle the question, because Jordan Love is so hot and because Green Bay is in such a great offensive rhythm, and they took the ball first last week against Dallas, and they got the lead. And the 49ers have trailed three times this year at halftime, and they've lost all three of those games. So I asked Kyle the question, would you take the ball to begin the game to try to Maybe have a long drive and make uh, Jordan Love stand on the sidelines and maybe disrupt the rhythm. And, and he said, absolutely not. No, he's going. The Niners like to defer uh, possession to the second half of the game. I followed up and asked him why. And he said, you know, the advantage of doing it is to maybe get that one extra possession. Now, you never know how the first half is going to go. Um, you know, there could be lots of possessions. There could be limited numbers of possessions, depending on how long the drives go. If everybody's defense dominates and you go three and out a bunch of times and your opponent goes three and out a bunch of times, then who knows um, how many possessions you're going to get. But he likes the idea and he's comfortable with getting the scoring last before going into half and scoring first coming out of the half. He believes in it. Um, it's part of his coaching philosophy, and he's not going away from it. So despite the fact that, man, I was thinking maybe you take the ball and you run, you run an 18-play drive and you just run it down their throat and you've got this long, methodical drive, and Jordan Love, instead of warming up and immediately playing, warms up and stands on the sidelines for 20 minutes, and maybe that alone would disrupt his rhythm, or maybe the fact that he would have to play from behind potentially could disrupt his rhythm. Kyle said, no, we're not doing that. We're going, if we win the coin toss, we are going to defer to the second half, and we will take the ball to begin the third quarter. So he's resolute. We'll find out if it works Saturday night. I don't know what's going to work. All I do know is, though, that Jordan loves in a great rhythm, and disrupting that rhythm is a major key to victory. Um, he was asked about Brian Greasy. Does he get fired up during games when he talks to Brock Purdy? And he says, I don't think he's out of control. Uh, Brian's a competitive dude. Kyle went on to say, hey, look, you know, this is a competitive endeavor, and we, if you care at all, you're going to have fiery conversations. And he said Brock's a competitive dude as well, and he can handle it. So not a concern, but, he, it, you know, that was an interesting question by one of the media people. Um, 
Somebody asked about if Steve Wilkes is adapted to the Niners scheme and, you know, what that process was like, so on and so forth, which is almost kind of a beginning of the year question. But he's like, yeah, it's a huge challenge for what Steve did. He came here. He didn't adapt to the Niners. He didn't take his own scheme or run his own defense. He adapted to the Niners scheme. So he came in and he had to feel it out. And he spent the off season spending lots and lots of hours asking questions, talking to a lot of people, watching film, watching the coaching film uh, that they have on tape of Robert Sala coaching the defense, of D'Amico Ryan's coaching the defense. And he put in a ton of work and he credited Steve with, you know, having that diligence to put in that work. Um, he, Kyle was asked about why he doesn't fake punt. And he says, you know, I don't like to trick people to win games. Uh, but then at the end, he's like, you know, we may see it this weekend. Uh, I don't think you're going to see a fake punt. I mean, it's just a, he does, it's not part of his repertoire. It's not something that he believes in. And he, he tends to stick with what he likes. Um, he was asked about the full speed padded practice that they had last week. And he said it was vitally important. He described it as crucial. It was huge. Uh, we needed to do it. Uh, things like that. And basically, the Niners just wanted to make sure that they, they don't come into this game rusty in any way. And having a full padded practice, um, whether some players liked it, some players didn't, it was probably what the Niners needed. And the most important thing is they got it and uh, nobody got hurt. And they, they went live and, sh and you know shook off some of that rust. Um, I asked him about, at the end of the presser, about you know, so many of the players this week expressed to me that they really love the plan going into this Green Bay game. And it, it was really unsolicited. I didn't ask them about the plan. I said, hey, you know, you got Green Bay this week. What do you think? And I go, oh, we really love our plan. We really love our plan. And I would say three or four different guys said that to me this week. Um, and I asked him, you know, do you not only have to come up with a plan, but do you have to sell the plan? And he said, I hope not. I hope I don't have to sell the plan. But then he went on to say that he really liked that the players have confidence in the plan. And then the last question of the presser was about Brandon Ayuk. And he did, you know, Kyle loves the fact that Brandon Ayuk, who was slighted for the Pro Bowl, won the all pro wide receiver spot or got one of the two all pro wide receiver spots. He said he was I was happy that he got it. He knows how important it is to the players to have some of those individual accolades in addition to um, you know, in addition to to obviously the team goals, which are win the Super Bowl. And then the locker room opened and I had a chance to go in the locker room. And today I did an extended interview with Logan Ryan. And I love talking to Logan Ryan. He's a very interesting guy. Um, I asked him, what's the difference between regular season mode and playoff mode? And he said, you know, the one thing, the main difference is that your opponents in the playoffs are better. You know, they're good. You're going to play a good team in the playoffs. And I asked him about Jordan Love, what stands out to him about Jordan Love. He says he's got great command of the offense. He's in, a, he's in sync with LaFleur, um, and he's in sync with his young receivers. Uh, I asked him about Aaron Jones and stopping the run as the number one goal, and he said, you know, it's no different than any other football game. you got to run the ball, you got to stop the run, and almost the, first, the, the game plan always begins on defense with stopping the run. And he noted that stopping Jones is a major key to victory. Um, I asked him about, you know, going up against a team like Green Bay that has an assortment of top tier receivers as opposed to Green Bay in the past when they had like just one. They had Devontae Adams and there was a huge drop off. And he said, you know, I'd rather go up against a team that has no good receivers, which is obvious. But then he said, you know, really, you got to defend their plays, not their players. I thought that was an interesting answer. Um, and, you know, that is one of those things that you could, you could, you know, decipher and break down for hours. But he said, you know, that's really the key. It's defending the plays that they run, not necessarily the players. I asked him about the vibe in the locker room and whether experience matters. And he's like, you know, he's been on teams that had experience that didn't win. He's been on teams that had no experience that did win. He says he thinks it's an overrated element. He, think, he thinks experience, you know, um, that we talk way too much about it and it's not that big of a deal. I asked him what kind of advice would you have for the young DBs because Tayshawn Gibson and him are the veterans in a room that have some of the youngest players on the entire team. And he said, do what you normally do. You know, be where you're supposed to be. If you're supposed to be in a spot, be there. And he said, it's not the week to try anything new. It's not a week to try a new pill. It's not a week to try a new film study habits. It's not a week to try a new lifting program. It's not a week to bust out anything new. Go with your 
go with your prep, trust your prep, um, work at it, maybe you know, do a few more mental reps, but don't change up your routine. Uh, I thought that was kind of a key thing. I asked him about the, you know, the Niners culture, and he's like, you know, he feels like they've got a real good culture, but ultimately, you know, it's going to come down to how do they show up Saturday night? I mean, you got to go play and you got to do your thing. And then I asked him, you know, he's played corner, he's played safety, what's the difference? And he's like, you know what, football in 2023, 2024, it's much more positionless on the back end. You know, whether you're a corner or a safety, you're playing coverage, uh, you got to break down in space, you got to make tackles, you got to be sound, you got to be where you're supposed to be. Um, and that the difference between, you know, the mindset of a corner as opposed to the mindset of a safety is also kind of an underrated element. So that was that. Then I had a long conversation with Spencer Wagey off, off camera. Um, and we just talked about how he delivers, uh, you know, baby calves in the off season and, and pulls them out of their mother's stomach and how he's working the farm in, in South Dakota um, and just balancing these two lives, trying to make the team as a practice squad guy and, and get ready for next year, and all the things that went into being a practice squad player. But we eventually, the conversation turned to Green Bay's offensive line, and he just said that, you know, he thought they were a really solid run blocking line, that they'll stay on you, uh, that they, you know, they don't fall off their blocks, and it's really going to be on on the Niner D line to to play well in this game. But he also felt like the Niner defensive line was was particularly designed to have success against this kind of an O-line. Um, and I thought that was an interesting answer. And then as far as news and notes from around the league, you know, it seems like there's an awful lot of people that are, you know, slapping around Brock Purdy and don't believe in Brock Purdy. And, you know, I was, I was in the corner of the locker room late in the media period and Brock and Dre Greenlaw were talking and, you can just tell they, they share a locker, you know, they share locker stalls next door to each other in the corner of the locker room. And, and you could just tell, you know, they're expressing, you know, mutual respect for one another and encouraging one another. And Brock was asking Dre about his Achilles and his rehab and how he's getting back. And, and they were complimenting one another. And, um, you know, two, I just looked at those two guys and I think in a lot of ways, those are the two tone setters on this team. Brock is much, very much a tone setter on the offense, and Dre Greenlaw is really the tone setter on the defense. And um, it's interesting that they have this unique relationship as locker mates. And then one other comment I've got to throw in there. You know, I, I saw this just before I jumped into to this video, that Amy Trask, the former Raider executive, who's worked in different broadcast entities, she's an attorney, she used to work for Al Davis, um, and she's very bright interviewed her many times on Cambiar. I really like Amy. I think she's, she's thoughtful and she's interesting. But she really went out of her way today to slight Brock Purdy. And I, I don't understand it. I really don't understand it. She said this weekend there are eight terrific quarterbacks playing and Brock Purdy. She said eight terrific quor quarterbacks playing. Seven terrific quarterbacks. There's eight quarterbacks playing. Seven of them are terrific quarterbacks and Brock Purdy. <laughs> I don't get it. I do not get why there, there is this need to slap Brock Purdy around. I don't get it. Um, <laughs> she said, I don't put him in the same category as those other seven. She was doing an interview with a lady named Susie Schuster. And I'll give Susie credit. She, she pushed back. And she said, what is it about Brock? And, she, and, and Amy didn't really have anything, um, you know, to, to really say. She just says that she's got Brock in a different category than these other quarterbacks. Um, and I just thought that was so interesting. And all I would say to people, and a lot of people, I saw some of the comments on Twitter. My God, people. Um, I, I get it. We're, you know, we're Niner fans and we believe in Brock Purdy and we don't think, we think she's dead wrong. And I think she's dead wrong. But I mean, some of the comments were so crude and so ugly. And it's like, come on, man. I mean, seriously, just because somebody has a different football opinion, you know, doesn't mean that you, you're, you have license to call her all kinds of heinous, terrible things on Twitter. And it just shows how sad and pathetic and angry people get if you disagree over anything. But I disagree with her. And all I'll say to people who read it, don't put a lot of credence into what she says. 
not because she's an idiot or anything like that. She's smart, but she's a lawyer. She's not a football scout. She's not a quarterback coach. She's not a talent evaluator. She's not a general manager. She's not a road scout. She's not the head of college scouting. She's not a pro personnel director. She's not really skilled in that capacity to make that evaluation. She's an observer of the game and she's a keen observer of the game, but she doesn't know personnel. And the, you know, she's worked in football organizations never once do they ever have her making personnel decisions. So just remember that. Um, you know, she just said there's seven terrific quarterbacks playing this weekend in Brock Purdy. Why you would single him out is beyond me. The guy had 31 touchdowns, 11 interceptions. His team went 12 and four. He was statistically the best quarterback in the NFL. He had a 113 quarterback rating. Guess where that ranked in the NFL? First, 9.6 yards per attempt. Guess where that ranked in the NFL? First. 13.3 yards per completion. Guess where that ranked in the NFL? First, all right? So um, <laughs> I don't know what to say other than to say she doesn't know, she doesn't know personnel. I mean, I, I love her, um, but if she was sitting right here, I'd say the same thing to her face. She doesn't know player personnel. She's wrong. And she's going to be backtracking off those comments in a very short amount of time. Uh, Brock Purdy, you're telling me that Baker Mayfield is better than Brock Purdy? Uh, really? you tell me that Jared Goff is a better quarterback than Brock Purdy? Really? I just think she's looking at um, draft position, and that's clouding her eval. And deep down, she's not really trained properly to have uh, personnel evaluations that any of us should put real credence in. So I love her. She's a good person. And she's a very good, uh, talented executive. That was a very good asset to Al Davis and Bruce Allen and the Raiders for years. I've enjoyed her, enjoyed her on the NFL Network. I love talking to her when I've had her on as a guest on the radio. She's a great guest. She's so wrong about Brock Purdy. Uh, I don't even know where to begin. So we're going to find out for sure what Brock's about uh, coming up in these playoffs. And it all starts Saturday night at Levi's. So I would suggest to Amy and everybody else, Tune in for the game and get ready to backtrack off that opinion because Brock Purdy is a terrific NFL quarterback, and I think he's already proven it, and I think he's going to prove it more so to the, the, the still the doubters are out there, and they're out there in number, and uh, they're out there with their pitchforks. Um, Saturday night, we're all going to find out about Brock Purdy and, and how good he is against a really good Green Bay team. All right, thanks to Pig and a Pickle for being the title sponsor of The Krug Show. Thanks to uh, Underdog Fantasy for sponsoring this video. Thanks to all you guys for supporting The Krug Show on YouTube.